a study for your chapter one test. <clears throat> So, a parameter is a characteristic of a population, but a statistic is just a measurement from a sample. So, um, okay, let's see. If a particular country has 50 total states, and if the areas of all 50 states are added and calculated then that's going to be a parameter because it describes a characteristic of a population because it includes all of the states. If it included only part of the states then that would be a statistic instead because it would only describe a characteristic of a sample. So but in this case it's all the states so it's a parameter. So a sample of students is selected and it's found 40% on a television. So that's just a statistic because it's a numerical measurement describing a characteristic of a sample. So Um, the percentages of female students at different colleges. That could take on any value in an interval. So <clears throat> that would be continuous. The number of students in a class is 23. So <clears throat> the number of students in a class is 23. That's from a discrete set because the number of students can only be like one, two, or three, or four, but it can't be any possible number. <clears throat> the number of fingers that different people have is discrete because they can only take on specific values. So, <clears throat> monthly temperatures those are interval measurements because every degree of temperature is the same interval but it's not ratio because the monthly temperature in Fahrenheit does not have a true zero point. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is not actually the, a true zero value. volume of planets in cubic meters, <clears throat> that would be the ratio level. <clears throat> so in a set of data, <clears throat> And our speeds are 10 for slow, 20 for medium, 30 for fast. The average is 25.4. So the data are I would say ordinal. Because they don't actually necessarily <clears throat> these numbers don't actually represent an actual speed, they don't, it doesn't say 10 means 10 megabytes per second, it just says 10 for slow, 20 for medium. So there's no actual units at all. So it's just basically like slow, medium, fast is ordinal. So what is wrong with that calculation? <clears throat> so such data should not be used for calculations such as an average because 10 for slow doesn't have any units and so it doesn't represent an actual amount. A movie with a four-star rating is twice as good as one with a two-star rating. Well, once again, a four-star rating is not actually necessarily twice as good because 
that's just an ordinal rating. So the ratio level of measurement does not apply. So in a study of boys with a disease, they were injected with vitamins. So since you actually did something to them, that would be <clears throat> an experiment. If you had just watched them, then that would have been an observational study. So <clears throat> when you have a large sample, you are repeating the same process with many different people. And so A is wrong because it doesn't specify whether or not they knew whether they were taking it or not. So they might have known. So we can't choose that one. Um, it, uh, once again, we can't choose C because that information is not given. <clears throat> um, Part D doesn't have anything to do with about re replication, but the answer would be B, because the group sample sizes are all large, so there's plenty of repeated results to look at. So that is how replication was applied in the study. This would just be um, observational. They're not doing anything to people. So <clears throat> it says of 5,000 surveys, 717 were returned. So what percent is that? Five seven hundred seventeen divided by five thousand equals point one four three four, which if you move the decimal point over it would be fourteen point three four percent. This response rate <clears throat> I would say that looks kind of low. Now it says round to the nearest whole number, so I'm going to round off 14.3% to 14%. So what's the problem with a low response rate? Well, when you have a low response rate, you're probably going to get a you may you have a good chance of getting a biased sample of only people who are interested in either supporting or opposing or having some kind of a special interest in the topic. So in this case, they were called after their numbers were randomly generated by a computer. So that would be random sampling. So you, they divided their day up into three parts, morning, afternoon, and evening. Then you measured the breathing rate at the different times during the day. That's called stratified sampling. And you collect data from different strata, such as different times of the day or different parts of a population, or things like that. So, 
So declaring the person was audited because she was randomly selected from all taxpayers. So that would be random sampling. Now, on the last question, if they would have been <clears throat> audited because every 1,000th person was audited, that would have been systematic sampling. So this question, this is just a study, an observational study because the researchers, <clears throat> they do not attempt to modify the individuals at all. They don't do anything to them. So what's the problem with this study? Well, they posted it to their newspaper's electronic edition, so that was a convenient sample. And also, the people can volunteer to respond. They can just fill it out if they want to. So that's called a voluntary sample. And so that's a convenient sample with voluntary response, which has a high chance of leading to bias. So, <clears throat> is the researcher doing something to them, or is she just studying them and looking at them? So, well, it looks like it's just an observational study because the researchers does not attempt to modify the individuals. What is the problem with that study? Well, if you only have four people in your study, four males and four females, eight people total, that is not enough replication to really get a good result. So basically the sample is just too small. So let's see. If the data are to be collected over the next six years, that's a study into the future, which is called a prospective study, whereas a study into the past is called a retrospective study. So when you measure the people who sleep each night before and after they've been treated with the drug, that's called a matched pairs design. Because you're matching up the person with a pair of measurements. One measurement before they were treated, one measurement after they were treated, and that's called a matched pair design. So they're wanting to do a trial of a possible vaccine for a disease of a, of a certain virus. Sounds very relevant right now. Um, it would be good to just have a completely randomized design for this experiment to make sure that every, every type of person has an equal chance of being represented for the effectiveness of the vaccine. So, <clears throat> the sample in <clears throat> number one, a die is rolled and it's all students in the row corresponding to the outcome of the die. So you're going to get a row of six students all together. That's a cluster sample. That's not actually truly a simple random sample. So that first example is not a simple random sample. However, though, <clears throat> it would be a random sample because the people are chosen in a random way by rolling a die. 
even though the cluster has chosen random, it is chosen as a cluster. So the next time the cards are shuffled and six names are drawn from the top. So everybody has a random chance of being chosen equally. So that is a simple random sample. And <clears throat> it is also a random sample as well. Now the six youngest students are selected. Well, that is not a simple random sample. And it's also not a random sample either because it's just the youngest people. And that's just a quick example of how one possible version of your first test might be and some and an explanation of how to do think through some of the possible questions that you might be asked. Thank you very much and best wishes to you.